Um, I welcome you on our uh, Z-Way Controller webinar series. We already have quite a lot of people online. Um, this webinar series will be about the Z-Way Controller software. Uh, it will be a free series webinar uh, today we will discuss uh, introduction to the home automation with Zidway. Uh, next week we will discuss advanced usage of Zidway uh, and uh, in two weeks we will discuss integration of Zidway with other software. Um, okay. So let's start. Uh, Z-Way is the software uh, that is manufactured by Z-Way Me, by us. I'm Sergey Polterak, uh, the lead of uh, technical team. And um, today we will do a very short introduction in Z-Way. Uh, how to start to use it, um, what you can do with Zidway, and uh, in a week and two weeks we will uh, discuss more detailed uh, features of Zidway, advanced stuff, advanced usage, and integration with uh, additional uh, third-party control, uh, third-party systems. Uh, today um, we will do only basic stuff, so Zidway controller is a software that is uh, made for home automation. Uh, Z-Way is made uh, es especially for Z-Wave, and we paid attention to um, support as many Z-Wave devices as possible. Uh, but uh, Z-Way additionally supports a uh, few other technologies, such as a Notion, some proprietary uh, Wi-Fi devices, and um, uh, various integrations uh, using HTTP and uh, TCP IP. Uh, Z-Way requires some Z-Wave Me hardware uh, or a licensed solution. Licensed solution means that uh, uh, some hardware that was manufactured uh, in agreement with us uh, and that can run Z-Way internally. On the hardware side, you always need something to control Z-Wave devices. And uh, Z-Wave Me provides several options. Uh, and um, the most popular option is the Raspberry. Raspberry, it's a Z-Wave shield like this that can be connected on top of a standard Raspberry Pi. So this is an example of Raspberry Pi Model 3. FreeB plus, I think, yeah. Uh, and uh, you just plug it in like this, so installation is done. The next is to install the software, which is also pretty easy and we will discuss it a little bit later. Uh, additionally, there are other options, uh, such as a USB dongle like this. So this is uh, one of the smallest USB dongle available in Z-Wave. Uh, beside that, uh, there is also an option to use um, a hub. A hub is a ready-to-go uh, controller like this, uh, which can be used uh, to make your home automation. So this is an um, end customer solution, uh, while the USB dongle and uh, Raspberry Pi are more for advanced users, for geeks, and for installers. Uh, Z-Way software itself can run on Raspberry Pi. It can also run on Windows if you use it with a USB dongle or Linux, uh, like Ubuntu and Debian. Um, let's go through various home automation features. Uh, first of all, Z-Way um, has a lot of different apps uh, that allows you to easily create home automation. Today we will walk through some of them and show how easy it is to create uh, basic smart home um, uh, rules. Uh, additionally, you can do scripts, uh, advanced programming with Zidway. We use JavaScript as a basic language, which is uh, very known and pretty easy to use. Uh, 
the full home automation system uh, that is part of Z-Way is open source. Uh, Z-Way is not open source itself in, in, in totally. Uh, some parts are closed, like the Z-Wave part, which is closed because Z-Wave is currently not open. Uh, but um, the full home automation engine uh, is uh, um, open sourced. It's uh, published on GitHub and you can contribute to it. Uh, the basic web um, interface uh, is also open source uh, and the expert user interface uh, which is made for um, advanced users and installers is also open source and also available on GitHub. Um, of course, Z-Way has um, various mobile apps. Uh, you can find in app stores several apps that support Z-Way. Some of them are made by us, some are made by the community. Currently, um, uh, both iOS and Android applications are under full rework and um, Android is already on approval stage with Google. Uh, so we hope that mid of next week it will be even published. Uh, iOS will come up uh, a little bit later. Uh, the way and uh, additionally has a remote access system through Find Z with Me. Uh, and um, uh, this allows you to control your Home automation from everywhere. Additionally, it's very important uh, for integration with um, uh, some uh, uh, various cloud-to-cloud -cloud services like uh, uh, speech assistants, like um, uh, IFTTT and others. Uh, so remote access is pretty important, but you can still uh, work without it, of course. Uh, the way allows you to set up a multi-user system with access rights to different devices. So, for example, you can allow your your children to access um, uh, devices in kids' room, uh, but uh, not in other rooms. Uh, this is not only to prevent access, um, unattended access, but also to simplify the life of uh, people. For example, for your elderly uh, parents, you can create um, another account that will be uh, with only a few devices that would be much easier for them. Additionally, uh, speech assistants are supported. Uh, of course, Apple Siri for HomeKit. Uh, additionally, Yandex Alice and uh, um, Amazon Alexa and Google Home. Uh, the two latter are also under full rework currently uh, to support, um, uh, Google is already out, but Alexa is uh, reworked because uh, of the new Alexa protocol. Um, there are also integration of um, uh, systems like Apple HomeKit. Uh, so with a um, few simple clicks, you can add Apple HomeKit support and um, use your home automation right from your uh, Apple Home app. Uh, also, you can um, uh, add uh, some integrations like an ocean. For example, if you plug in your controller a USB dongle like this, so this is a just standard an ocean dongle, uh, you can then control connect different devices like, for example, this um, battery-free um, um, wall pedal. Um, Besides that, as you weigh also, um, uh, has different integrations with cloud services and um, local home automation systems like um, IFTTT, uh, MQTT, Home Assistant, OpenHub. Um, most of them are integrations made by the community, uh, but some of them are, uh, once we uh, see them important and uh, not well supported by the community, we pick them up and uh, um, support by Ourself. Um, if we talk about Z-Wave specific features, um, Z-Wave is also uh, very advanced in that part. Uh, first of all, uh, Z-Wave implementation of Z-Wave protocol is based on specification and not on uh, specific device templates. This is important. That means if you have some device that is working uh, well in Z-Wave, if um, you will include some other device of the pretty same type, but uh, from another brand uh, with uh, slightly different features, it will work as um, 
uh, good as um, the other one. So no need to create a specific templates. Uh, and uh, this is very important. Uh, we know from our customers that uh, uh, the way supports more than thousand different devices, and most of them we have never seen and never touched. And we're pretty confident that they work um, with Z way because uh, those devices were certified. They are Z wave plus devices, and Z way is also certified in Z wave plus. Expert UI. Um, uh, yeah, full backup restore feature is also very important. And in Z-Wave, you can not only um, backup your home automation, but also uh, backup the full network topology and then uh, move it to another hardware. For example, some customers start with a USB dongle, and then they go to a Raspberry Pi solution with Raspberry Shield with this one. And uh, it's very uh, helpful when you can just make a backup and restore it on another hardware. You can also always have a backup of, of your system. And for installers, it's pretty cool that you can swap pretty fast um, um, a home automation system made for your customer in case of some troubles with the hardware. Uh, there is also an, an expert UI that allows you to go deep in Z-Wave configuration and Z-Wave management. Um, this UI is Z-Wave spe specific and um, uh, has all the features that are required by uh, Z-Wave Alliance to be certified. But in addition, uh, Z-Wave has quite a lot of um, diagnostic tools and um, Z-Wave sniffer tool. Uh, there was a dedicated webinar a few weeks ago about um, Z-Wave diagnostic tools. Um, you can go on our web page and look in news and watch the video of this webinar if you want to get um, deeper uh, in uh, Z-Wave network diagnostics. Uh, and of course, Z-Wave supports the most recent Z-Wave um, features like security S2 and smart start that makes your network secure and uh, faster to build up. Before we go in uh, uh, Zidway uh, uh, tour, uh, let's first uh, discuss, uh, let's first uh, uh, understand the Z-Way ideology. So first of all, you own your data, that means we store nothing in the cloud. Everything is stored locally. And um, uh, you can use the remote access system to um, uh, and uh, get your data through the cloud. But nothing is stored in the cloud system that provides the remote access. Everything is stored in your house. Once you turn off remote access, nothing about your data is um, available from out side of your house and um, this is very important and we feel very important that you don't need to pay any um, recurrent um, monthly fee uh, you got your controller you have your data and uh, uh, you are the only to manage it uh, but uh, Z-Way has quite big software flexibility and uh, a lot of possibilities for customizations. This is uh, uh, important for customers who want to customize something to integrate Z-Way in their system or change the UI, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Additionally, a uh, very important key, features, key feature is uh, the API. We have several levels of API. It's a HTTP API, JavaScript API, and even C API if you want to integrate Z-Way in your project as a library. Uh, we are, uh, support the full Z-Wave standard. So once we see a new device supporting some new features that were never implemented in Z-Way before, um, we take that device and we integrate this new uh, part of standard and it becomes available for, the, for all the devices and all the manufacturers. Uh, and of course, we provide full access to low-level data, like Z-Wave internal uh, data structures, 
this is very important to learn Z-Wave protocol and very helpful for developers and advanced users. Uh, and of course, community involvement. We um, are happy that we have a pretty big community. Uh, the community is uh, involved in um, creation of apps, uh, in fixing bugs sometimes, in making uh, uh, improvements. And uh, uh, of course, we try to support the, um, uh, this great community by uh, helping people um, to get uh, to fix things, to help them to improve. Um, uh, the UI and uh, the server server side um, of uh, the software. So how to get the way? Um, depending on the hardware that you use, and uh, uh, it, you have different options. So the most uh, recent uh, version of Z-Way is always built for Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is our um, uh, leadership um, platform. Uh, the installation is pretty easy. You just run a script, uh, uh, or you can also download a full SD card image. Uh, uh, the script will install you uh, the software uh, and configure the port, those pins on the Raspberry Pi uh, to run together with this Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Shield. Uh, then you can use uh, Package manager by uh, made by Raspbian to update um, the way, or you can use again the same script, same script or the user interface to get updates. If you are running uh, on Windows, you can download the Windows installer, and it will guide you through the installation. That's pretty easy. Uh, you just install it, and you select the port where uh, the USB dongle landed in the operating system, and um, that's all. If you are running Ubuntu or Debian, you currently there are no uh, package uh, in uh, Debian package available, but uh, it will come up, I think, in a few months. Currently, you can just unpack the tarball and um, run the system. If you are using Western Digital NAS, uh, you can download the package from our website and use the Western Digital pack Packaging System to install it. Uh, there are other platforms that also support Z-Way. Uh, they are not that common, or um, uh, they are supported by uh, some partners. So in case you need to install Z-Way on some platform or update Z-Way on, on some platform um, that is not directly listed on our website, you can contact us or uh, the manufacturer of that hardware, and um, uh, we or they will help you. If you're running on a, on a hub, uh, everything is already installed on it, and updates um, uh, are available uh, when you log into the system. For more information, you can go to the, the download page, Okay, let's uh, let's go through the uh, through the system, uh, and uh, now I will open screencast and uh, show how to use uh, the way in details. So, to if you know the IP address of um, uh, your controller, you can just uh, go to that IP. If you don't, and you have remote access system enabled, you should uh, go to Find It With Me, like here. And uh, uh, instead of logging in, you, you will see below controllers that are available in the network. So for example, here, the controller I will work on is uh, this one. This is a fresh new controller. And this controller uh, invites you to set up a login and password. Uh, I will type uh, some default password and uh, go to login. So this is our welcome screen that will guide you uh, how to use the way. But since I'm here to tell you everything in more details, we will skip it. Initially, uh, you have this screen. Uh, here you have widgets. Widgets are so-called um, 
controls that you can use to control your control your devices or uh, look on their status. Uh, additionally, you have a top menu uh, with dashboard. Currently, the dashboard is empty with rooms. There are no rooms because it's a fresh controller and uh, all the widgets and events. Uh, additionally, you have home automation tab where you can set up uh, some basic home automation. Uh, and uh, on the right, you have a menu that allows you uh, to customize and uh, uh, set up your system. Uh, let's go uh, shortly through all of these items. So apps will be to um, install home automation apps and configure them. Uh, we will go in details in that tab. Uh, devices is the tab that we will um, go right now to include new device. Customize allows you to set up skins, um, add additional icons, and this is about customization of the view of your um, controller. Uh, my settings is to change password and set up uh, uh, some settings like default language, etc. Um, so here you can set, set up language, um, set that you don't, don't want to see system apps, for example. Um, and here you see different sessions um, uh, and you can uh, log out from any of them. Management is the uh, tab where you set up your controller. Uh, so user management allows you to add new users. Uh, when you add a user, you can set up the role of that user. It can be admin, it can be user, just a normal user, local user. Uh, this is a passwordless um, user from local host only. Uh, this is um, good if you want to uh, add, for example, a screen to your Raspberry Pi, or you use a touch screen on the same system where you run the software. You can use such a local user without that password. Uh, you can also set up an anonymous user. Uh, this is pretty uh, good, for example, for guests where you don't want to provide them uh, access to important devices, but you also don't want to uh, bother them with entering a login and password. In that case, when they go to the system, they immediately get access to some devices that you uh, allowed to access. Uh, then you can uh, set up access to different rooms. Currently, we have no rooms, so we cannot grant access to, to any rooms. But once you will add uh, a room, there will be uh, a possibility to add rooms to that user. Uh, adding rooms means all the devices in the room are available to the user. Uh, additionally, you can set up a device-specific uh, uh, access, for example, you want to add that widget to the user and allow access to this widget. Um, let's go back to management. For remote access, um, you get the ID for remote access. I will show a little bit later how to use it. Additionally, you have uh, uh, the checkbox to enable remote access. Once you disable it, um, uh, you will not be able to access your system through our Find It With Me service. Uh, remote enable remote support access is made to help us to support you. So once you have a problem, uh, sometimes we need to get into your system um, and uh, solve some problems. So you can temporarily avail allow us to do that by checking this. You can on some systems you can also set up time zone right here. Um, with backup uh, and restore section, you can download the backup to your computer. You can also set up a cloud backup uh, that will store uh, weekly back backups uh, on uh, our servers. If you don't want to push uh, your uh, backup to our servers, you can set up by yourself download uh, of uh, uh, download to your own computer. Uh, and uh, restore is used, of course, to restore the system if you uh, mangled something and you want to roll back. Factory default is to reset the controller. Uh, for example, after testing uh, stuff, you can just reset it and uh, start over from scratch. 
uh, firmware upgrade allows you to uh, update the version of um, your uh, Z-Way system. Um, and additionally, you can make uh, bug reports right from here and uh, set up uh, special tokens for hidden apps. Uh, for This is important uh, when you develop applications. Uh, this we will discuss in two weeks. So uh, now let's go to uh, devices. Uh, here you can see different devices that you can add. So most important for us is uh, adding Z-Wave devices. You can also add mobile uh, phone uh, and add access to that phone. Uh, this is done by uh, scanning a QR code. Uh, you can, of course, uh, add manually uh, all the IP, uh, login, and password, but you can also scan the, this QR code uh, and get the same. Uh, you can also add a camera uh, and set up um, HTTP URLs to get the stream. Uh, voice assist assistance, but uh, currently voice assistants, uh, for example, Google do not even require uh, this. You can just go through Google um, Assistant application, Google Home application, and um, uh, support of uh, some Wi-Fi proprietary uh, systems is um, available from here. Uh, let's go to Z-Wave de Z -Wave devices. Uh, here you can, uh, there are quite a lot of different brands, so the system is loading different brands. Uh, you can either pick up uh, the brand if you know exactly what the device is, but uh, in most cases you just want to go to uh, add uh, Z-Wave device and identify it automatically because Z-Wave has no problem to identify devices. Uh, so now we will start um, and include um, a wall plug, a wall plug that you see on uh, another screen. So if you look um, uh, on the webinar page, you will see that there is um, uh, a power strip with several plugs. So let's press uh, start inclusion. And we'll, what we will do is uh, just to plug in the device Okay, so as you have seen, I have not clicked on anything on the plug itself. This is because uh, Z-Wave protocol supports a so-called um, uh, automatic inclusion. We call it uh, like plug and play in Z-Wave. So this is a plug. I will just rename it uh, plug. And uh, uh, we can assign it to a room, but we don't have a room yet. So we will add one like this. Uh, so let's add it to the room. Uh, now I have several widgets that are available. So the, uh, the one on the bottom is uh, looking on the icon is to switch it on off. This is to uh, send alarms. For example, if you don't want to, you can deactivate it. And those are different meters. Um, you can name them different, uh, differently because, um, uh, for example, if it's a, a double switch, uh, different switches can be called, uh, can, can have different names. For example, can even switch lights in different rooms. This is why you can set up uh, separately each feature of the Z-Wave device. So now let's save it. And uh, so this is our plug with different uh, uh, widgets that are generated, and this is not generated, so it's uh, striked. If we go in all widgets, we will see um, our device here. So we can turn on and off, and you can see that it happens. Um, and uh, now you have your plug added. You, you have different um, characteristics of, um, the, of your power network. If you don't need some of them, you can just hide them or even disable. Uh, each widget uh, has an icon, a name, uh, and uh, location where it is um, located in, uh, last update time, 
uh, the value itself, settings, and uh, you can also see uh, events, uh, but currently there are nothing to show. There is, we, we have just added the device, but here we already clicked on and off several times. So this was made initially and before we uh, uh, named the device. And once named, we have a new name and the status. If you don't need some devices, uh, some widgets, for example, uh, the free on the top, you can just hide them by clicking on the gear and uh, hide. Um, let's do it for those we don't need, just to have a clean view of our uh, controller. Uh, you can also disable them by disabling the, um, the application that made them, but uh, currently we will keep it like this. Additionally, we probably want this one to be on the dashboard. So we just check Add to Dashboard and Save. Now, if we go to Dashboard, we will see this uh, particular device available on the dashboard. That means uh, you will see it once you log in immediately. And this is uh, pretty good for uh, the mobile app where you open it, you immediately see important things. Now let's add another device. Let's go to uh, devices. Again, add new. Now we will add um, this device. It's a Filio door sensor. Um, so let's, let's pick up Filio, this one. It doesn't really matter anyway, we end up in, uh, in here. But uh, additionally, we show the picture of the device, uh, not to forget which, is in, which will be included right now. Uh, and uh, again, to include it, we just need to remove this. The device will be automatically included, so no need to click. Um, sometimes if the device was already included in uh, some network, you might need to reset the device before including it. Currently, we don't need to make it because it's a brand new device. Uh, and uh, let's uh, now name different uh, different widgets. So here the device was detected automatically and um, it was, uh, uh, all the widgets was were all automatically uh, named. For example, if we don't need the tamper or we don't need the luminance sensor, again, we disable them. We will keep temperature and um, door. Uh, once you select uh, the room here, all the widgets uh, that are not deactivated will end up in this room. Of course, you can then individually uh, go in uh, each widget and uh, set up. Uh, the location. So let's go back. We'll let the device update its temperature because once it once it includes it, it reports insane things. Now it's included, and of course you can see uh, it shows uh, the status. So nice. Uh, everything um, is as expected currently. So what we will do next, next we will try to make some very basic home automation. Uh, and to do so, we will, uh, for example, con con configure to turn on the plug when uh, the door opens. But we will uh, do nothing when the door is closing, closing. To do so, we will go in apps and uh, here are active apps that are currently available. Uh, those are just informational widgets, uh, and we don't need them. Uh, if we go in local apps, we will see the full list of apps that are available out of the box when you install the system. Uh, you can also filter those uh, apps by going in different categories. Uh, or you can just type in the name, and in most cases you will uh, you will guess correctly. Currently, we need um, if then app. 
because we want uh, to configure a relationship between two devices. So we want a binary sensor, the door sensor, kitchen door, and when it will be on, we want the device, which is a binary switch, also to go uh, on. Okay, we save it. So that was just a clicking. Um, if we go here, you see the door is closed. The plug is off. Once we do this, you see um, on the camera that the device turned on. Additionally, you immediately see the reaction here. But when we close it, nothing happens because we have no con not configured it. So you see the door sensor is off, but uh, uh, the plug remains on because we have not configured the opposite um, uh, action. Why we did it? Because we want another app. Uh, we want to turn off, for example, after five seconds. In a more realistic case, it will be uh, like a wardrobe where you want uh, the light to turn on uh, by the door sensor and to turn off automatically after several minutes. So we will pick up another uh, app, which is automated switch off. So there are quite a lot of apps about automation. So we want this one. Uh, we pick up the device, currently it's the only device, um, and we set up turn on after five seconds. Uh, so if we go here, we turn it on, let's test our home automation. So one, two, three, four, and five. Off. Okay, perfect. So that was a pretty simple relationship between um, devices. Uh, and uh, here we even mixed several apps dealing with the plug. One is turning it on and another one is turning it off. Uh, of course, if you go in events, uh, you will see everything that is happening in your system. Uh, so you see temperature updates, you see uh, door window uh, status uh, events, you see uh, plug events, and uh, you can also observe how it works in real time. So we will do like this and we'll see that things are updated in life. Perfect. So now looking on the widgets, uh, we can notice that we can um, easily filter stuff here. Uh, for example, if you want to show only switches or only sensors or only binary sensors or alarms, um, we can uh, select any of uh, them. We can also show hidden devices. Uh, and here the icon shows that uh, it's a hidden one. Okay, this was just to make uh, uh, it easier to navigate. Once uh, you will have a big home automation system with a lot of devices, it, it will be easier. Additionally, you can just type the name and you will see it here. Uh, that's also pretty good. Uh, on the dashboard, uh, it's pretty same, but you can also move devices like using drag and drop. Now, uh, once we made that simple uh, automation, let's go in apps and disable it. So you see the two apps that we added here are um, enabled. We will just pause them to disable this functionality. Now nothing will happen once we, once we uh, open and close. Uh, the automatic off will not work neither. This is good if you want just to disable them. If you don't need them, just delete them. Uh, additionally, you have quite a lot of different online apps. Online apps are stored on our uh, online service, uh, developer.zigwave.me. Uh, this is a service made for developers to push their um, apps uh, to users. Anyone can publish it. We will do a uh, pretty simple verification and um, uh, make it available for everybody. And uh, here you can see that there are quite a lot of apps and most of them are made by the community, not by us. 
uh, some of them are available for update. For example, this is an Apple, Apple HomeKit. Uh, by the way, if we just add this app, there is nothing to configure, just click Save. Uh, this, uh, those home automation devices will be automatically available in uh, Google Home, and um, you will be able to add Raspberry to Google, uh, sorry, Apple Home, uh, and uh, uh, control all those devices through Apple HomeKit. Now let's do a few more steps. Uh, so we will add another app, which is um, thermostat, virtual thermostat. Suppose you have um, some cooling system that you want to uh, control through the plug, and you have this temperature sensor, uh, that, uh, this uh, door, uh, sen door window sensor has a temperature sensor built in. If you want to use this one, you can um, make a thermostat. Uh, so let's select the plug, let's select the temperature sensor, uh, let's select the mode, for example, it would be cooling, and uh, hist hysteresis uh, is uh, uh, the uh, value that is used uh, uh, to enable on and off your plug. For example, if the actual temperature drops uh, one degree uh, uh, from the temperature that was assigned uh, to the thermostat, it will start uh, st stop cooling, and it, if it will go above, it will start cooling. Uh, once we save that um, app, we will see that we have one more widget. This widget was created by this app, you can even go in settings of this widget and see that it was generated by this particular app. Uh, let's assign it to uh, another room. Uh, for this, we will go to locations. Uh, and let's make all, all that beautiful. So first of all, let's pick up some predefined picture for kitchen. Uh, here you see devices that were previously assigned to this room. You can edit the list from here, or you can also select the room in the device uh, settings. Uh, additionally, we will create another room, and we will even upload a picture. So this is a picture from some living room, not mine, uh, but um, uh, some external JPEG picture that was loaded. Uh -huh, okay, uh, and uh, it will be called living room. Good, and we will add the thermostat in this living room. Um, now we, you see that we can navigate through different rooms and see devices by rooms. This is also pretty good uh, if you are limited in your screen and you want to, uh, to have devices grouped by locations. You can also check the checkbox display selected images at background. This is pretty good for tablets because you have the blurred uh, background uh, available and uh, that makes it a little bit more fancy. Now you can see that, uh, um, yeah, let's uh, probably add uh, all those devices, uh, all devices that we need to the dashboard to have them on the same screen and um, uh, we will see how it works uh, with that virtual thermostat that we just uh, added. So let's go to dashboard. We see the actual temperature is 22 degrees. We see the, uh, for example, we want uh, 30 degrees. The plug will go on. Uh, if we want and it will start heating the room. It will we will go uh, below uh, twenty degrees. It will go uh, off. So if we select a temperature near the actual actual was twenty two degrees, we will see that the device is not turning on. But if we go one degree above, it will start heating. 
So this is because of uh, the one degree hysteresis setup. Okay. Uh, so that was a pretty simple explanation how home automation works in Zidway, how you can mix different devices, combine them. Uh, let's walk a little bit through different applications and see what is also possible. I will not discuss uh, uh, all of them, but uh, some most interesting will be uh, listed here. So um, 24 hours history is uh, an app that allows to make uh, pretty simple graphics of uh, 24 hours. Is this scripting is um, an advanced uh, way to make home automation. We will discuss it next week. This one we're already fam familiar with. Uh, just make relations between devices. Local weather informer gives you uh, temperature from a local forecast um, provider. Uh, and uh, you can use uh, then temperature sensor of outdoor uh, uh, in your home automation uh, without actual sensor. So you just uh, pick up uh, uh, the weather forecast uh, from the internet. Uh, schedule allows you to turn on and off uh, or uh, open, close, dim, and uh, set thermostat values for different uh, uh, devices depending on time so you can set up several uh, points and um, decide what you want in each point uh, additionally you have uh, of course home kit uh, associations uh, association is uh, uh, pretty like if then that we used before but it will also uh, take into consideration both events turning on and turning off uh, automated locking um, is made for uh, closing the door where uh, closing the lock where the door sensor closes. Uh, automated switch off we already uh, used. Uh, climate control we will look at it in more details a little bit later. Uh, delayed actions allows you to introduce some delay in uh, uh, actions like switching on off uh, with a delay or clo closing. Dummy device is just creating um, a widget that is not uh, uh, related to anything. Then you can use it in home automation like some virtual switch or a virtual dimmer. Um, a notion uh, allows you to add a notion uh, with this USB dongle. Uh, so you just specify the port, the rest you keep by default and you just save. What else? Uh, we also have um, Google Home integration. Um, group devices is um, very helpful when, where you have um, several lights that are in the same room. You want them to always act together, but uh, technically you had to uh, put them on different uh, switches. Uh, here you can group them and act them um, together. Abedit Abitat App Support is the app to support mobile application by Habitat. Uh, HTTP device uh, is uh, uh, a device that uh, take a data source from some HTTP request and when you turn it on, off, or you dim it, or change the state, it will also send an HTTP request. This is pretty good for integration. This uh, is pretty similar. Huawei not uh, notification is uh, an app that allows you to use um, uh, free 4G dongle uh, to get uh, SMS, uh, get and send SMS. Um, IFTTT integration will send uh, the status. There are two of them a little bit different because both were created by uh, the community. Uh, they allow us to send um, status from your devices to IFTTT. Uh, this is very helpful if you want to automate something with cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations. For example, you want IFTTT to notify you or s turn on some device that is also integrated with IFTTT, but it's not a Z-Wave device. For example, some Netatmo or some other devices. Uh, this is another app to make uh, home automation easier. It supports, uh, it 
controls light through motion sensors, turn on and off um, uh, the light based on motion. Uh, you can add many motion sensors uh, to uh, in, in the same logic to control the light, and additionally, you can also uh, support uh, rockers, pedals, uh, so you can always manually turn on and off. Uh, Link Other Z-Way Controller is a nice app that allows you to uh, have two Z-Way controllers uh, connected through IP, uh, but in different Z-Wave networks, uh, you can import device from one controller to another controller. This is pretty cool if you have, uh, for example, a second house um, in your uh, configuration, but uh, it's quite far to make uh, one single Z-Wave network, so you can divide it in two Z-Wave networks and then import devices from one Z-Wave controller to another one. Um, Logical Rules is a very powerful app to make Boolean logic uh, account uh, where you can make pretty complex uh, rules like if this happened and that and additionally the status is um, or the device is on or off and the time is in the range then do something. So this is pretty cool uh, for very complex rules. Um, I will skip some of them and uh, because there are really quite a lot. Scenes allow you to group different devices in scenes. Um, Sonos, for example, allows you to control the volume and play stop operations right from the way. Uh, additionally, you have um, uh, device-specific um, uh, apps, uh, for example, this one is made for electronic device, but there there are quite a lot of very specific device, uh, very specific apps in the same way. Uh, in online store, uh, you can see way more of those apps, and we suggest you to look on um, on them later. Um, now we have uh, probably the last part of. Um, Home automation. Uh, so we discussed different apps, uh, apps um, uh, that allows you to customize your devices, uh, to make very simple home automation rules. Uh, those apps are usually um, building blocks for more complex home automation. Uh, but um, in the way, we decided to make um, several use cases and. Um, uh, make special UI for those use cases. Uh, this, uh, we, uh, this tab is automation, and it allows you to make scenes, rules, schedules, heating schedules, uh, and alarm notifications uh, um, due to environmental sensors like uh, smoke and leakage, and security. Uh, scenes are pretty simple. You select some icon, you pick up devices. For example, you want this plug to, to be on or off, it depends on you, uh, when you activate the scene. Additionally, for example, you want a thermostat to be turned on uh, to uh, uh, and um, then you save it and you are done. When you will click on this um, uh, scene, the scene will also create, uh, it will be a widget created in your, uh, in your system. So you see the scene, and uh, when you turn it on, it will automatically turn on the plug. Uh, yeah, the plug is on, and the term thermostat, uh, by default, it was zero degrees, so now it's zero. Um, good. So let's go and look. Uh, let's delete it this scene. Uh, okay, let's go in rules. Uh, rules tells you that there is uh, if then uh, that it can transform into this UI. We will not do it, we'll just show how to make a new one. Uh, so again, you can do if door is on or off, op open, closed, and for example, temperature. Uh, yeah, here you can select only one rule. But if you do advance it, you will be able to select and or, and then add many different rules. 
So let's do device. Uh, hmm. Um, sorry. Uh, so what you can, for example, set uh, compare temperature with some values, or you can also compare different devices between each other. And uh, this is uh, when they. Um, uh, this is if so uh, the condition to be checked when this rule will be activated. Then is what to do on uh, condition uh, if the condition is fulfilled. For example, you can turn on the plug or turn, turn off the plug. Uh, else will allow you to make the reverse event after some seconds. Uh, so it shows you that the, the device that was off will turn on back after several seconds. Uh, schedules are uh, pretty similar. Again, you add different devices that you want to turn in a specific state. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, you can set up temperature to 23 degrees at some particular point and turn on the plug. Uh, then you select which day and um, uh, what time you want to make it happen. You can make many of such schedules and uh, run them. So, you can make more or you can just let's remove it. Um, heating control uh, allows you to set um, uh, thermostats to a particular temperature depending on the time. Um, it is done by uh, rooms. So all the thermostats, for example, here it shows thermostats in the room. There is only one virtual thermostat. But if it will be several of them, they will all follow the same schedule. This is uh, pretty good because you just define the temperature for the overall room. And if you have several thermostats, for example, uh, several um, TRV uh, uh, valves uh, on the um, uh, heating system, they will all follow the same temperature. Then you just um, click to make your temperature uh, schedule. You can also set um, safe, saving temperature and comfort temperature. Uh, here you can just click and set the temperature you want for that part particular period. If you save it, you will also, uh, the plug clicked because um, it follows the schedule already. And now you can have uh, uh, all the, uh, for all rooms, or you can do it per room. Uh, you can turn on comfort, turn on saving mode, uh, or follow the schedule. Pretty easy and allows you to set up uh, uh, climate schedules pretty easily. Uh, additionally, you can have a pretty complex notifications about smoke alarms and leakage sensors, but we have not added any during this presentation, so it will be hard to show how it works. Uh, pretty same with security. We have deactivated the, uh, uh, we still have, yeah, we have a door sensor. Okay, so this is a, an alarm condition. So when the door uh, is open, uh, alarm should happen. Uh, for alarm, we will have to, uh, beside notifications, you can also add sirens. Uh, for disarm, uh, you can make arm and disarm schedule. And you can also add uh, additional devices that will uh, arm and disarm. For example, if you turn on some device, uh, the system will arm automatically, and if you turn it off, the system will disarm. I think that's pretty all about uh, uh, the home automation with Zidway. Uh, we have covered all the basic um, parts of it. Uh, now we will um, 
answer questions. And um, if you have um, more questions, you can uh, write us on uh, uh, by mail, and we will, of course, answer you. So I will now read uh, questions. If you want to ask questions, please um, uh, do it in the special questions section. If you made it in the chat, uh, it will be a little bit harder to uh, pick them up. Uh, so where, uh, first question, where the hub, this one, will be available for purchase uh, and where? Uh, this hub was um, previously available uh, as a pop hub uh, and uh, unfortunately, because of the restructuring of uh, pop brand, it's not available anymore. We hope that it will be available again around uh, July, maybe August, but uh, things are pretty hard to predict right now because of um, pretty uh, pretty unusual situation on the market. Uh, so we hope that we will manage to export it and um, place in different um, shops and uh, by by the beginning of Q3 or maybe by the end of Q3. Uh, is there a way to simulate Z-Wave uh, hardware transmitter device uh, in software for research and development? Yes, it is. Uh, it is possible. Uh, we will discuss it uh, uh, on the webinar in uh, two weeks. Uh, Z-Way has a pretty nice API that allows you not only to control stuff, but also to inject packets in the Z-Wave engine so you can emulate uh, events from devices. This is done through the API, pretty easy, but uh, we, will, um, we will show it in two weeks. If you need it before, please um, type us a mail and uh, we will help you. Um, So there was a question if this webinar will be um, available in Russian because we are from Russia and many people are interested in. Um, well, we have uh, we had uh, online um, uh, learning sessions, uh, offline learning sessions before uh, about Z-Way, uh, but uh, currently they're uh, postponed. Uh, we will resume them and maybe move to online uh, also in Russian. Uh, how to contribute uh, and get localized um, uh, versions of um, um, of Z-Way. So first of all, uh, there is a GitHub where you can um, look on all the um, projects that are available online. Uh, let me show you how to access it. Um, so if you go to Um, github.com I think we will um, I don't remember how it's typed but we will search for it with me um, okay yeah so this is our um, this is our company account, and here we have home automation system. So this is the full Z-Way home automation engine. Uh, if you uh, look on it, you will see, for example, all the modules. Those are different apps that are shipped together with Z-Way. Uh, all other apps are available on uh, another website uh, because they're community-driven, uh, developer.zwave.me just uh, remember to make it secure um, yeah so all apps and you can browse them uh, but basically it's same as look uh, look on it uh, through uh, the z-way UI uh, there is also help here how to contribute how to make own modules and um, skins so you should look on that uh, technical tutorial, skins and modules, icons and modules. Um, beside that, we also have uh, the smart home UI, the UI that we um, uh, talked about. 
the full code is available here. Uh, and uh, you can contribute. To contribute, you just do fork and uh, uh, make everything, ma make all your changes, and then you will have to make pull, so called pull requests. Uh, but um, we will discuss it in two weeks. If you want to, to get uh, earlier, just um, let us know. Uh, is there a plan to bring a uh, little bit more order in uh, community applications uh, in the application market? Uh, because some of them are not working anymore or are conflicting. Yes, there is. Uh, um, we are uh revising some of the apps uh, we already started to change some of the community apps uh, where the um, uh, maintainer is not available anymore so this will uh, be um, done soon i suppose uh, yeah do we want to make make changes in the um, uh, scripting um, uh, language and change it to Python or to Scratch. Uh, I don't think so. First of all, the um, uh, full Z way home automation code is written in JavaScript. Uh, second, JavaScript it's a pretty nice language, uh, not as feng shui as uh, Python probably, but uh, very powerful and um, millions of developers are familiar with. So uh, we think to keep it uh, as a main language for quite a long time. Um, is there an API to get um, uh, sniffer and uh, sensor data from the API, uh, through the API? Yes, it's possible. We will discuss it um, in two weeks, all the different API levels. Uh, uh, if you, again, if you need more information, just uh, let us know and we will uh, send you before that. Um, yeah, when you do backup and restore, some, some users noticed that um, uh, the dependencies of, on, um, uh, on apps are uh, failing. Uh, yes, this is because you need to install all your dependencies um, from online store before you do a restore. Uh, because if you take a fresh system, uh, the online applications are not um, uh, fetched from the online store. You need to fetch them uh, by your own. Uh, we plan in future to include um, uh, in backup uh, all the installed applications. Uh, that might happen, but uh, not now. You have to install them uh, just before making a restore. Um, yeah, the, um, another question was what about um, uh, the if then rule that we used to turn on uh, the plug and then we used um, automatic off to turn it off? Uh, what will happen if the controller is um, off? Of course, if the controller is unplugged and uh, not available anymore, it will not receive any comments and will not be able to send them. So your automation will uh, turn into a pumpkin, of course. This is um, pretty common with um, all the centralized home automation systems. Uh, and uh, if you want to have a more decentralized system, we suggest to use uh, uh, Z-Wave direct associations. Um, this will, uh, direct associations will help you to uh, make more robust network where controller is not uh, used in most decisions. Uh, but we will discuss this next week when, because it's Z-Wave specific. Additionally, you cannot make uh, relation, uh, direct relations between devices that are, um, uh, that are coming from different sources. For example, if you want to turn on uh, the plug, the Z-Wave plug for, from some Notion device like this one, it will not be uh, possible directly, of course, because uh, those two systems uh, speak different technologies.
Um, yeah, Raspberry firmware. Uh, when will be the next version available? So Raspberry version 5.37 is the most recent uh, one. Uh, how to update to it? Unfortunately, because of um, a production bug made by our contractor, uh, Raspberry that were not manufactured on our factory, but on another one, uh, uh, they had a bug that sometimes during upgrade they uh, got bricked. And because of this, we disabled by default um, um, upgrades of those systems. But if you enter uh, the token on the upgrade, from our upgrade page, there is um, uh, uh, a text field for a token. If you enter the word, the word all, A-L-L, um, you will get everything you need to upgrade your system. Uh, this was uh, made just to, um, to make sure that people are aware uh, that they are doing an upgrade, uh, that they, this might damage. So we, when we um, disclose this uh, secret token, we always uh, make the comment that sometimes um, about 5% of devices might get got bricked. And in that case, you just need to contact um, uh, Z-Wave Europe as a master distributor for Europe or your local shop to swap the device to a new one. Unfortunately, uh, this is uh, this was a production problem many years ago and since we it's already fixed many years ago but uh, there are quite a lot of devices and uh, we wanted did, never wanted people to break their stuff just by upgrading. Uh, is it possible to move um, all the registered devices uh, from, for example, Raspberry to UZB. Uh, yes, of course, as uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, Z-Way allows you to make the full topology um, backup, and when you restore it, you can restore to any of uh, Z-Wave Me devices uh, using Z-Way. And the only thing you need to do after uh, re making a restore is to go to network reorganization and uh, uh, reorganize um, routing table. That's uh, the only thing to do after you make a make a full network restore. Uh, will easy scripting uh, app be discussed in next webinar? Yes, uh, it's. Um, it will be discussed in next webinar uh, because it's a pretty uh, advanced app and we will show in all details how to use it. Uh, what is the preferred way to use if then using the app or using the home automation? What's the difference? Uh, there are not that much difference. Initially in Z-Way uh, everything was done by apps and then uh, once um, uh, the typical use cases were uh, grouped in six uh, automation apps. Um, the same became available in another form. Uh, the automation uh, is just probably easier for uh, newbies to uh, uh, to fill in uh, the form, uh, but um, all the engineers usually prefer to use apps because they are easier, they are smaller, and um, you know, it's like in Unix, you use a lot of small building blocks, small apps to build a big system, and it's um, more helpful in most cases. But for pretty typical applications, automation is something very helpful. Uh, I mean, automation uh, uh, section in the way. Um, so uh, another question, um, a customer owns a pop hub um, of a pretty um, old version about two years ago. Is it possible to upgrade it to um, free um, version free? And how to do it? Yes, it's possible. To do so, you need to send us your um, unique ID. Uh, the unique ID is available in the use, expert user interface or uh, on the back of the controller. And uh, since POP um, decided not to continue uh, to upgrade those hubs, 
at least for now, you can uh, switch to our main firmware stream. Uh, just uh, know that you will have all the logos changed to Zid with me. Uh, but besides that, it's the same hardware and you can continue to use um, uh, all the latest features. So just send us your um, uh, unique ID, UID, and uh, uh, we will help you with the rest. Can you have at the same time Raspberry as a primary controller and AirTech uh, uh, attached to a QNAP um, as a backup? Um, well, yes and no, it depends what do you want to make uh, as a backup. Uh, if you just want to have a second controller in your network, of course it's possible. Raspberry can be primary, can be secondary. There can be many different controllers in one network um, with different brands. Uh, if you really want, want to have a hot swap, uh, that means, for example, if something happens with your existing uh, Raspberry, uh, swap it immediately to another system. We suggest to use one of our hardware and uh, always have a fresh backup. Um, is uh, version 3.06 more stable? Uh, well, more stable than which <laughs> version? Of course, in uh, if you look on change logs, we have made uh, um, the latest version uh, much more stable by fixing quite um, old problems with stability, uh, so should be much more stable. Um, uh, are there other commercially available hubs that are running the way other than POP? Uh, currently, no. Uh, we hope to release it, but uh, currently, I think uh, there is Western Digital. There is also a Tune HD um, media player uh, uh, that also has Z-Wave chip enabled inside and Z-Way as a default system. Uh, but I'm not sure how um, popular they are in, uh, in Europe. Uh, is it possible to determine if the um, Raspberry will become bricked after the um, after running the firmware upgrade? Unfortunately, no, and this is why we took that strange decision to hide the upgrade um, because, unfortunately, technically it was a programming fault, um, programming error, and uh, uh, we cannot read it back uh, unless we refresh completely. So unfortunately, no, it's not possible. Um, can several controllers on the same network control same set of devices? Uh, yes, of course, it's possible. In Z-Wave, uh, you can have many controllers uh, in one single network. They can all control all those devices. You just uh, have to take into consideration several uh, several things. First of all, um, uh, if, for example, Z-Way is uh, supporting S2 security and um, will include using S2 security other devices if they support uh, S2. Uh, so if uh, your second controller in the network is not supporting S2, it will not be able to speak to that device because uh, the device will just ignore all the less secure communications. Uh, so make sure that um, your controllers are using the same security scheme. Uh, second is uh, that um, all the devices uh, in Z-Wave are by default reporting their state to a controller. Uh, in some devices, uh, there can be only one controller to, to send uh, notifications to. In some devices, you can have up to five or even 10 uh, controllers that can be notified. So if you have only one um, uh, available option to be notified, only one controller to be notified, in that case, only Z-Way will receive notifications uh, and other controllers will not. But beside that, you can, uh, of course, um, uh, control different devices uh, from different controllers or in same devices from different controllers.
Okay, I think that's pretty all. If you have additional questions, uh, please um, uh, send us an email at zidway uh, at zidwave.me, uh, or uh, you can also write us to support at zidwave.me. Uh, this um, uh, webinar will be recorded uh, and uh, available online, uh, so you can. Uh, watch it in future and share with um, your customers or with your uh, friends. Uh, thank you very much. We see you next uh, week on a more technical webinar. Uh, questions that are not answered here or that are pretty technical, we will move them to the next webinar. Uh, see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye.